Brenda Palmer's debut feature, the first feature released, Murder a la Mod is the most elucidating in understanding the pathology of one of the more discussed directors of the American lineup. De Palma's priorities in this debut of sorts are the stagings of murders, the abstracted realm of male gaze, an emphasis on spaces and subjective misunderstandings, all bound together by an obsession of the medium itself and how a narrative can demonstrate the medium rather than this medium transcribe a narrative proceeding. Not an extraordinary film, it is in part sloppy, both cinematographically, cinematographically and in executing narrative episodes in dramatic or ironic dramatic fashion. It recalls the obsession of subject's experience as object, familiar from the early Goddard, and the cheeky dissection of image which Warhol upended our logos through. Most importantly, someone was emboldened and invigorated by Antonioni's blow-up, and would be for at least a decade and a half subsequently. It displays flashes of frenetic genius and evidence of improper haphazard analysis of modern post-war media paradigms. It may be considered dated or too phallogocentric now, but I appreciate the insight into a young, exploratory, ambitious filmmaker-slash-philosopher during his 20s who would later hone his craft into some of the most interesting English-language films of all time and inspiring some of the most riveting discourse to accompany the medium ever composed. It is easy to relate to, instructive to learn from, and illuminating of characteristics universal to all younger, wannabe, inescapably male, filmmaker, auteur, punk intellectual, ambitious, psycho-flesh, I feel and hope so, at least. Murder a la mod it is easy to imagine many people needlessly hating on it for being non-conventional, overly interested in textbook theorising, it is true that, generally speaking, the young De Palma here is overly confident in his subject symbolism, transferring itself to the audiences, or just blithely indifferent. But I can also picture some first or second year university students finding too much unwarranted eff effective commonalities with the likes of Michael Snow, take New York ear and eye control of 1964. I, I, would consider, I wouldn't consider these ideas to have been achieved with cogent articulation within De Palma's work here, Although the fact that De Palma had the audacity to even try is, I would claim, excitingly brilliant in and of itself, it is easy to dismiss Murder a la Mod when imagining it as a debut feature from a director who left a medium right afterward. Although knowing how De Palma's priorities matured and refined, sharpened throughout his oeuvre, the choices made within Murder a la Mod are revealed as budding demonstrations of a highly addictive and aggressively fascinating decision maker within cinema's history. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian De Palma, one of AOD's major favourites, really have I wanted to ask questions of an artist more than of De Palma. Both theoretically and technologically, he has explored the medium with a passion surpassing the rest of his generation, a designated film brat group, you know, Altman, Scorsese, Coppola, though some of his later work is thoroughly interesting, Spielberg, Lucas, Penn, certainly Bogdanovich, somewhat Friedkin, though he did fairly well for himself at times, obviously, Malick even. De Palma is endorsed here. Let the arguments commence? Let's hope so.